is Ron Goodall from FightHype.com. I'm here with the WBA Gold Super Middleweight Champion, Lennox Allen. How are you doing? I'm good, man. How you doing? Doing great, doing great. Look, you got a big fight coming up. Yeah. With WBA regular moving on up, selecting more belts and things yeah. like that. How does it feel to be in a, in a big fight coming up? To be honest, I'm excited. Like, I've been waiting a minute to get a big fight. But, you know, the politics of the business, guys been doing their own thing, so I'm just excited, man. Get it, finally get this opportunity, and um, try and make, make the best use of it. Now, I, I believe, you know, originally, like, Eddie Hearn was trying to get the, the, the John Ryder fight with you, yeah. with the team, and then he went on fought Callum Smith, and then you were supposed to fight, I, I think, a fighter from Germany. Ah, uh, Russia. No, Russia. Yeah. And, and that didn't have so... Russia fought too. They went with somebody else. And, then, and um, basically, we in the whole of last year, but, I, you know, I, I never stopped working. As you know, I, I never really stopped working. Yeah. So, officially, it's a brand new year, and this is going to be our first fight for the year, so... I'm trying to make the best use of it. Now, uh, what do you what do you know a little bit about your opponent? I believe it was like a Cuban amateur kind of. Uh... Um, to be honest, I didn't I didn't really do as much like search about him, but I did watch a couple of videos and then like you know feel like he's a really slick out part. So basically, it's gonna be two uh, slick out part gonna be in there. So it's all about who wanted more. It's gonna come down to who wanted more. Now, of course, you know, a fight like this and a title like this puts you in the in the top dog kind of area when it comes to the, the, the super middleweight division. You know, seeing that you already have the WBA gold, yeah. that brings on the Calvin Smith, possibly Canelo. I'm open to fight anybody. I've been saying it for a minute. I just got this opportunity. I'm going to make the best use of it. And, you know, guess we're going to get past this one on uh, April 11th, and then we move on to bigger and better things. You know, for people who, who don't really haven't seen your fights or things like that, but you came in, fought Derek Webster, and people kind of guess went off the name of Derek Webster, and sure enough, you went in with victorious and dominated the fight in that fashion. And in, in this case, having a great performance, similar like that, or maybe better, is that more important than and then and then just just having that showing, or is it the title? I think this, I think this performance is gonna be for me. I want it to be better, like. 10 times better. The Derek Webster fight, I was kind of off a little bit. But this fight, I wanted to be better because I want to... 168 pounds, you know, like there's a they're the bigger dog in the, in the division. You know, and just talking a little bit about your background, you're, I, I believe you're the only champion from Guyana right now, right? Active? Um, yeah. Um, I'm currently like the only name that really ringing a bell, to be honest. You know, and, and how does that make you feel when you know that, you know, you're representing your country and you're performing very well? Man, um... I'm um, excited. This is something I wanted since I was a kid, and now I'm getting the opportunity on the, on a big scale. So you know, basically carrying my country on my back. <laughs> and of course, you know, with that overall, it is the goal to have maybe a hometown fight once over here in Guyana. To, to, I was, to be honest, I was I was um I was talking about it when I was down there, and if one of the networks want to go down there, it would definitely be a big thing down there. Um. I was talking to the Prime Minister Guyana and he, he, was, he was open to the idea. Oh wow. Yeah, so if any major network want to do it, like my country is like big into boxing and I'm the only name that really ring the bell, they would definitely like to do, the, do a show like that. You know, being able to talk to the Prime Minister and important figures in, that, in your country of Guyana, how does, how does that resonate? Like, does that seem a little too unreal though? Like, yeah, um... Like for, for me, since an amateur, I, I had a, a decent name growing up in Guyana, even when I turned pro. But I had like so many setbacks, and it kind of like as long as you're not relevant, people don't remember you. And I don't care whatever athlete you is, if you're not like active, nobody really remember you after a while. So I'm back and pumping again, and you know. I hope after this fight, we could definitely do something in Guyana. That was like a dream of mine when I was a kid. And it could be reality if any network willing to come on board. And then just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, some of your team members, the people that you work with going into this fight, the trainers, some, some of the people that you work um, with. Um, Sosa been, um, Sosa been here from day one. I came, I came to Sosa five years ago. And we had like, from then we had like a great relationship in terms of fighter and trainer. Because it's not sometimes, it's not only about boxing. People will say, oh, you get a good trainer sometimes. 
you never got to get a best friend in the world. I'm not saying my trainer is not one of the best friend in the world, but I'm saying chemistry as a, with a fighter and a, and, and a boxer to me is more important. And I came to Tokyo, he opened me with, well, with our welcome arms, and we never stopped working since then. So we've been together for five years. Even when shit is not going my way, this man always believed in me. He was like, don't worry, you're going to become my first world champion. And there goes Behop. <laughs> you know, so, you know, we got we got a good table here. We got, it's, it's more than just boxing and fighting at our gym. It's more like a family. It's more than, it's, it's beyond boxing at this point. You know, and, and seeing that, like you were mentioning, like, you know, you're not looking for, like, the star setting names or, like, you know, um, trainers that have all these stable, um, you know, fighters. But this is a, a, actually a good stable of fighters that you're yeah, actually Yeah, we, we had a real good stable, especially uh, New York fighters. I think we got a, we got the best stable. I think I know other um, coach got as much fighters as folks at this point. You know, it, I mean, like, relevant fighters. Yeah. And, so... And, and, and with that overall, you've been in the gym, you sparred heavyweight, you I know, top heavyweight level, I, fought uh, <laughs> former, uh, sparred former champions, um, all across the board, like I think like Peter Quillen, I think. Yeah, that's my, um, Peter Quillen is like more like my brother, I don't consider Peter, I met Peter Quillen since, Peter Quillen since, I usually call him Petey, so, mm -hmm. people who usually call him, Peter Quillen, that's like the long run for me, I, I usually just say Petey, and um, since I came to this country, like, since I came to this country, we had a bond. Since 2008, me and Peter Quillen were friends. And he, he go on to do bigger, better things than me. He became world champion before I did. He had like a good run. And, you know, we still got a good relationship. We still got a brother relationship. You know, going into this fight, um, it, it's going to be in, what is it, Minnesota? Yeah. On, on, on the FS1 card. Yeah. And uh, you guys are going to be the co-main event? On yeah. the, on the, uh, what is it, the uh, Lamont, Lamont Road? Or, uh, I'm, I'm going to be a hundred percent with you. I don't pay attention to all those stuff. <laughs> I don't even know who's the main event. My job is, as you see, my job is come to the gym and, and do my work. That's my job. When it's time to go, I'm ready to go. Now, of course, Lastly, before I let you go, there's another fight that's kind of like on the horizon, not 100%, it's with a New York native, um, and an alleged pound for pound, uh, Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez for a, a, a supremacy of that division. Do you, do you have a winner in that fight? To be honest, I don't think Lopez is ready for a fight like that. Okay. To me, I would have probably, maybe like two, three fights down the road would have been better. But at this point, I don't think he's ready for a fight like that. And, and can you elaborate just why? Just I think, think he's going to be outclassed. Skill-wise? Skill-wise, he's going to be outclassed. Now, seeing that some people have seen the Richard Fomey performance, he knocked him out in two rounds. He's a bigger guy. And yeah. Does, does that, okay. any of that can play a factor? I, I don't really think so. Like, anybody can get knocked out. You could come out and you, you warm. You didn't get warm up properly. Boom, you get hit with a shot. And then you don't know what happened after. Or maybe you got to get hit with a good punch. Anybody can get knocked out. So I'm not gonna judge after that fight. I really didn't think he um I don't really think at this point of his career he needed a fight like that. Maybe he and his team know probably know better, but from, from my perspective, I don't think um he needed a fight like that right now. Mm. Where you do even if you win, where do you go from here? You know what I'm saying? Where do you go from here? Well I mean if you win, you kinda like the top dog though, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah but then kinda... I don't know. It's like what you gonna do? Move up and wait? Like Maybe, what are you gonna do? Um, but <laughs> I, to be honest, I don't think he's ready for a fight like that. It's a, it's a big step. Maybe, maybe he in a fight like Devin Haney would have been a good fight. Mm. That would be a great fight for me. I would prefer to see that. Mm. But Lomachenko on a different level. Now, um, any last messages to any of your fans, friends, um, people in Guyana? April 11th. You guys tune in on FX, Fox FX1. We live, baby. Perfect. Well, appreciate the time and wish you the best. No All right. problem, my man. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank I you. I appreciate you guys.